I'm Michelle Cortens, the Tree Fruit Specialist at Perania. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain how to input data in the Mary Blight model for blossom blight predictions. So Mary Blight is a computer program and it's used for predicting infection events and symptom development for most phases of fire blight epidemics in apples and pears. So in order to run this model, you need daily information on temperature, rainfall, and other weather events, along with key observations on apple and pear bud development. A fire blight risk rating for your farming operation is generated after you input that information into the model. And the results will help determine when and if to spray, helping to optimize those spray applications. This model was developed by many folks associated with the University of Maryland, and it is the main model used in Nova Scotia, hence the reason for this tutorial. So first, let's download the Mary Blight model, and there's a convenient link located on the Nova Scotia Fruit Growers Association website. If you go to the top tab, go to Education and Resources, and then click on Tools for Growers. And there you'll find the link to access Mary Blight 7.1. Click the link there and it will bring you to the website where you can download it. Now that we've got the Mary Blight program open, choose Start a New Season. For this example, we'll use the Apple Mary Blight model with the Kentville Weather Station data. And I'm going to choose metric so I can input in Celsius and millimeters. Now a blank screen appears. And the green tip date is required for the model to function, so that's where I'll start the model on April 21st. The green tip date is not important for blossom blight predictions, but it is used for other life stages of the fire blight bacteria. Blossom blight is our primary concern, so in terms of blossom blight, the temperatures that we input prior to bloom have no effect on the blossom blight outcome. So I could input an imaginary date for green tip just to satisfy the model, but for this example I'll just be realistic. Now I need to find the temperature data that I'll input into the model. You can use your own weather station if the data is reliable. You'll need daily maximum and minimum temperatures, as well as rainfall. You might also like to refer to the Environment Canada weather stations to fill in your own data gaps or to use their temperature forecasts. So I'll show you how to access the Kentville Weather Station data. Search for Environment Canada Kentville. When we start a season, we might need to populate the model with some historical weather data from the last few days. So scroll down to Historical Weather. From here, download the data, then copy the maximum and minimum temperatures. To start entering data in Mary Blight, choose Add or Modify Data. Paste the data into the appropriate cells. For temperatures that happened in the last 24 hours, return to the main weather station page and select Past 24 Hours. The maximum temperature is in red and the minimum temperature is in blue. Temperature values should be input at least daily because forecasts can be inaccurate. There are a few other entries required for the program to function. All dates should be filled out, and the program will display the next date in sequence if you simply hold the enter key and it'll continue to enter repeatedly. Next, we need to input the phenology stages. The only stages that are absolutely required are green tip and bloom. When we are in a cell, look at the footer of the program and it'll tell us what is a valid entry. So we'll enter GT for green tip. The bloom stage is when the first flower opens in the orchard. So on that date, we'll enter a B for bloom. This initiates the blossom infection risk and blossom blight symptom predictions. During bloom, the first character in the phenology column must remain as a B. Looking at the next column, wetness is any rain that has occurred in millimeters. As little as 0.25 millimeters should be noted during bloom as that can cause an infection to occur. Dew on apple tree leaves should also be noted with a D in the wet column in place of rain. However, this is usually an industry-wide discussion, so stay tuned in your email if a dew event does occur. 
In the spray column, type yes to inform the program that an antibiotic spray is applied. Otherwise, leave it blank. When an antibiotic is applied, the program resets the cumulative degree hour clock so that the subsequent risks for blossom infection are based only on new flowers that open after the spray. Note that antibiotic sprays work best when applied just before infection, so forecasts should be monitored daily. Under the notes section, you could record the percentage of bloom present or any other relevant notes that might help you later in the season as you evaluate your fire blight infections. Okay, now press enter and exit the edit mode by accepting changes. The blossom blight risk will be shown. Bacterial growth of fire blight populations is known as the epiphytic infection potential, also known as EIP, when using the Mary blight model. You'll notice in the output window here is now an EIP value during bloom. A blossom blight infection will occur if four of the following factors are present. Open blossoms, an EIP value of 100 or greater signifying high bacterial populations, a wetting event in the form of a dew or 0.25 millimeters of rainfall, and an average temperature greater than 15.6 degrees Celsius. If any three factors are present, the risk is high because only one factor is missing. If any two factors are present, the risk is moderate. And if any one factor is present, then the risk is low. One of the most valuable uses of the Mary Blight model is being able to predict future risk. The model has a prediction mode, but in that mode, the data you enter is not saved and will disappear when you exit. I prefer to work in the add and modify mode and then I just ensure that I update the final temperature values when they become available the next day. Let's take a look at the Environment Canada forecast and input some predictions. The forecast is saying it'll be 25 degrees high and 15 degrees low on the 26th of May and the next day it'll be a high of 29 and a low of 16. In these warm temperatures, the risk is high. No wetting event is currently expected though, so an infection is not predicted by the model, but you'll see that the risk is still quite high, and the EIP value is above 100, so there is enough bacterial growth around. Let's try a few scenarios, like what happens if it rains. So I input a wetting event here, and then you'll see that the risk changed to an infection event. Then what happens if we spray an antibiotic prior to this infection event? You'll notice that the bacterial population gets reduced. And with any of these changes, the risk changes accordingly. Also, if the EIP value is bordering 100, I like to add a degree or two to the forecast just to see how comfortable I am if the forecast ends up being warmer than expected. I hope this tutorial has been helpful. For more detailed information, there is a written Mary Blight manual that comes with the Mary Blight program, so I recommend you check that out too.